We're rolling into week three of the NFL season, week three of the fantasy football season, and I got some questions to ask. Every weekend, right before the games, I load up a video with some questions I got on these players. Last week, we talked about 10 players. Today, I got questions on five players that I want to see this Sunday play out to see what could happen for fantasy football. But before we dig in, you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're going hot and heavy on the waiver wire. We're using these videos to help you set your lineups. If you got trouble with that, check out the must start video. I'm answering questions there. I may be able to get to it still. Go check that out. But I got some questions myself. And I want to look at these players. I want to see what's happening with them. And one player in particular is Devin Achen. He's good to go. He's good to go for fantasy football. The thing about it, though, they're talking about his work rate and volume increasing. We're seeing a lot of injuries with this Dolphins backfield. He's been injured off and on during his rookie season, especially the start of the season, middle of the season. And we're top 10 in opportunities in the NFL right now. That's touches and targets. That being said, how much more workload can he handle? How much? Is this a risky scenario? Because I'm kind of cool where we're at. I'm kind of cool with this production. I'm cool with RB1 weeks. I don't want to get a little bit too greedy and he gets injured. I just don't want that happening. Right now, he's ranked 13th among all players on Fantasy Pros. The RB7 in the rankings for this week. He's locked and loaded. It's not that. The question is the workload and how long can he handle a huge workload that's going to increase if it does. Like, if it does increase, are we going to see that multiple weeks the rest of the season? Are they running this guy to death? Is that what they're planning to do? Is that why they drafted Jalen Wright? Because, hey, we're just going to run Devin H. into death. We're going to see what happens. And we'll draft this guy who's really fast from Tennessee to fill in if that happens as an insurance policy. Because they started the year out using him a lot. And now things happen where we got some injuries. And they're just saying, hey, he earns opportunities. We're going to use him a lot more. I want to see what's going on with Devin H. And I want to see how much workload he gets. It's not a bad thing until it's a bad thing. But it's not a bad thing. It's a great thing for week-to-week -week fantasy production. How long can it last? Jackson Smith and the Jigba's in the same game here. He blew up last week. His come-out party was in week two of 2024. Last year, it wasn't a horrible season for a rookie. It wasn't a horrible season. Just people thought he was going to be the next Justin Jefferson, and he wasn't that. And people just jumped off board. And he's sharing the, the wide receiver room with Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf. Only so many balls to go around. But he's tying DK Metcalf in targets right now. Leads the team in receptions. Has a decent average depth of target of 9.9. .9. Last year it was around 6. We're getting deeper targets downfield. Is his work rate going to stay is it going to stay here is he going to continue to get deep targets is he going to continue to get these opportunities because right now it's looking good it's looking good and in these blowout matchups where the ball's flying around he's going to get opportunities and maybe if that happens you want him more in your fantasy team he's not a buy low anymore people are paying attention to him after that wide receiver one week but that's my question are we going to see this work rate against the dolphins are we going to see it going forward we're on the road against the Detroit Lions in week four. Is that going to come back then? Is this going to be a steady Eddie thing? Is he what we thought he was going to be when he got drafted in the first round? It took some time. Remember, he started last year hurt. He had a ramp up, and it just was a slow start to the season. You see it right there in the chart, right there in the middle. And he missed pretty much entire final season at Ohio State. Maybe he needed more grace from you guys in draft because he technically did not get his final year at college, jumped in as a rookie after being hurt, and just had to fill in as the wide receiver three, getting opportunities here and there, and didn't, and didn't do too bad catching over 60 balls, 600 yards. That's pretty good for a rookie wide receiver after dealing with some injuries. Now we're coming up into year two, and it was blast off in week two. And we're running a lot of routes in week one. We saw two targets in week one. But it was a weird game script against Denver. Now we're going to play in Miami. Then we're playing Detroit. And we got the Giants. Let's see if this work rate can continue. Sam Laporta, if you want to talk about work rate, 
very funny with him. The thing is, he's running a lot of routes. He's running a lot of routes in an opportunity, but he's not getting a lot of targets. Just eight targets on the season, four per game. Target shares at 10, when last year it was a little over 20, so it's down there. His ADOTs dropped a few points as well. It's at four, usually it's around eight. So something's gotta give. Either in some of these matchups, he starts getting more targets, he starts ranking them in, or Jameson wins with that 24% target share, and that stays. And that hurts Sam Laporta because some of those targets are going to him. Those deep targets are more money for the Detroit Lions offense anyways. He's more explosive after the catch. He's more of a money maker. Or it's just matchup dependent. And the ball just goes where it goes in that matchup. Whatever's open or whatever's deficient for that defense that they're playing against. That's where the target's going to go because this offense is at liberty to do that. And also, Jameer Gibbs getting a good target share at 17%. That's very high for a running back. That's eating into Laporta as well. Again, who are you going to give the short target to? Because he's getting four yards per target here. Jameer Gibbs is around the line of scrimmage. You're going to give it to Sam Laporta? Or are you going to give it to Jameer Gibbs, who can score from anywhere on the field? That being said, Sam Laporta, though, should get more targets. Should push more to 15-20% to target share all things considered. So there's going to be some games where he gets some opportunity. Might be a buy low right now. But the thing is, I want to watch the work rate. I want to watch that. And we got a good matchup here. 51 and a half over under against the Arizona Cardinals. The ball's supposed to be moving per Vegas. That being said, maybe Sam Laporta gets his work. Terry McLaurin, though. He's getting work. He's getting work. He has a 23% target share. 12 targets. That is decent work. We're just not scoring fantasy points. He scored eight last week, four the week prior. We're on the road against the Bengals. Can Jaden Daniels lock it down with him downfield? Can we connect on some of these deep balls? Because he is a good wide receiver. He creates separation. He gets downfield. He's earning targets. He's getting a good eight dots at 9.2. He has 111 air yards on the year. A good target share. Nobody really to steal his volume. Something's got to give. It's either going to be like this where it's low or we're going to start seeing some spike weeks. It might be something comparable to last year and he might finish the season with like 11, 12, 13 points per game and maybe only have like one or two wide receiver one weeks that are pretty massive and a couple wide receiver two weeks mixed in there and some okay wide receiver three games. It might be a lot like last year. Maybe that's what we're going to see out of Terry McLaurin. I do think we will get a few wide receiver one weeks out of him because he's not going to go the full season with a 23% target share and not score any touchdowns. He's not going to see six targets per game and not score any touchdowns. He's going to get his opportunity sooner than later. Is it going to be this week against the Bengals? I'm going to watch the work rate. I'm going to see if he can bring in some of these targets. Romo Dunze. Had a 95.7% route participation rate last year. Keenan Allen's not going to be on the field. Romo Dunze has nine targets on the season and has a 14% target share. DJ Moore soaking all the targets, almost 30%. Keenan Allen, when he's on the field, he's getting a lot of the targets, but he's not going to be on the field this week. So Romo Dunze is going to get his chance to run. Can he connect with Caleb Williams? Can that happen? More routes, more opportunity, another game under his belt. Can that happen? Because if he can, can we get something after the catch? What's that going to look like? I'm watching him like a hawk. Very talented wide receiver prospect. We got two games under our belt. We got a matchup on the road against the Colts. The Bears are going to be on weird game scripts until Caleb Williams irons out. And that is the big factor for Roma Dunze. But the talent's there. We got speed. And the things are going to be funny for this season when you got a rookie quarterback and a rookie wide receiver. That being said, he is getting work rate. That means he's flashing a shade. He is getting opportunity. So you got to pay attention to him because the upside is going to hit sooner than later. Or if Caleb Williams irons things out or we get in some good game scripts, he could have the potential to blow up. Those are the five questions I got for Sunday. I want to watch these players. I want to see what they're doing. Let me know what you think in the comments below, who you're watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thing for watching, catch you on the next video.